So we've seen even more gains on Nokia's stock since the last video, driving up to about $4.26, which is absolutely insane. As mentioned before, Nokia was one of the stocks that went crazy at the beginning of the year during the retail-driven January short squeeze mania. However, like most short squeezes, the boom was somewhat short-lived, and the stock came tumbling back down to pre-squeeze levels. As of right now however, we are going back up fast, which ultimately raises the question of whether it can reach those highs again, who are only 14% away. So what we are going to do today is give you an insight into what is happening to Nokia's stock and break down exactly whether it is still a buy at the end of this video. And as the analysis in the few minutes is absolutely crucial to consider before buying the stock, make sure to stay tuned. Really quick before we jump right in, just hit that subscribe button down below. And as we'll keep you updated on breaking news and awesome trading opportunities every single day, subscribing would not only help us but also you. So there is really no excuse for not smashing the subscribe button, it's free, and you can always unsubscribe if you feel so. Alright, let's start talking about the stock. And if there is one thing you need to know about the company, then it is that a lot has changed, which is super important to consider for our prediction at the end of this video. Especially the new 5G infrastructure market in which Nokia operates seems extremely attractive. More incredible is its projected growth, which is expected to be at a compound annual rate of 67% by 2027. Yet the 5G and network specialist has been dealing with significant difficulties over the last several quarters. As an illustration, it lost a $6.6 .6 billion contract with Verizon Communications in September to Samsung for the supply of 5G equipment. The US telecom service provider remains an important customer for Nokia, but that event highlighted Nokia's declining competitiveness because of issues in integrating acquisitions and innovation. So the question here is whether Nokia can sustain itself in the more and more competitive business. But according to management, its market share in 4G and 5G mobile access will stay at 27% by the end of this year. That forecast excludes China though, where the company has become more prudent because of the uncertain profitability in that large market. In order to get back to the top however, Nokia then came up with a game-changing plan, which they call their Great Reset. As a part of this reset, the company for example plans to reduce the headcount by as much as another 10,000 people. Let's take a closer look at this reset and what it means for the company and its stock. Here's what's going on, so as just mentioned, Nokia will bring its employee countdown by as much as 10,000 names over the next 18 to 24 months, starting from roughly 90,000 employees. The company expects to save more than $700 million per year by the end of this restructuring, but the savings won't go toward boosting Nokia's bottom line. Instead, the company will increase its R&D spending and infrastructure investments in a targeted manner. It's all about 5G networking, cloud computing, and digital infrastructure from this point on. All told, the restructuring charges should match the cost savings almost exactly. By doing so, management for example anticipates operating margins to increase about 10% this year to a range and up to 13% by 2023, which pales in comparison to the competitor Ericsson's profitability. Thanks to its investments over the last several years in its 5G portfolio, Ericsson's operating margins reached 19% in 2020, and it aims to sustain its margins in the 15% to 17% range. You should compare these margins, however with a grain of salt, as both companies don't operate identical businesses, for instance, Nokia developed a network infrastructure portfolio. But the point is, besides areas of strength, Nokia must deliver flawless execution over the next several years to improve its financial results to only low revenue growth and modest operating margins. If it does that however, and it already started with its reset, the future is looking great, which also explains the average price target of about $5 among not only bullish but also bearish investors. Alright, with that being it for today's video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and want to support our mission of providing free financial information to everyone here on YouTube, please ensure you're subscribed and definitely consider leaving a like. As mentioned before, it really means the world to us. Thanks a lot and see you next time.